Alright, so in this problem, I have a to the power of 3 plus a squared is equal to 80. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by subtracting 80 on both sides. So I get a to the power of 3 plus a squared minus 80 is equal to 0. Now, I'm going to rewrite this as a to the power of 3 plus a squared minus 64 minus 16 is equal to 0. So I simply wrote negative 80 as negative 64 minus 16. And now, negative 64, I'm going to rewrite that as negative 4 to the power of 3. So I have a to the power of 3 minus 4 to the power of 3 plus a squared minus 16, I'm going to rewrite as 4 squared. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of 3 minus b to the power of 3, this is going to equal a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. And if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, if by using these two properties, I'm going to end up with a minus 4 times a squared plus 4a plus 16 plus a plus 4 is equal to 0. And this simplifies to a minus 4 times a squared plus 5a plus 20 is equal to 0. So now this gives me two equations. I get a minus 4 is equal to 0, and a squared plus 5a plus 20 is equal to 0. So for a minus 4 equals 0, a is obviously equal to 4. And for a squared plus 5a plus 20 equals 0, I'm going to use the quadratic formula, but I'm actually not going to waste your guys' time by actually doing it. So if you do end up doing it, you get that a is equal to negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 55i over 2. And the reason, actually what you should get is a equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 55 over 2. And the square root of negative 55, I can rewrite that as the square root of 55 times the square root of negative 1. And if you guys already didn't know, the square root of negative 1 is equal to the imaginary number i. So if I replace i with the square root of negative 1, I get a is equal to negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 55 i over 2. So that's how I got the square root of 55 i. All right, so in this problem, we have the square root of 3 to the power of x is equal to 81. Now, to solve this, I'm going to start here with the square root of 3. So let's just ignore everything else for a second and focus on the square root of 3. Now, the square root of a number is say the square root of x, this is the same thing as x to the power of 1 half. Because basically, the root here is 2, but we just don't write that. And the cube root of a number, that's that number to the power of 1 over 3, because we have a 3 over here. So the square root of 3, we can think of 3 as x in this case, and we can rewrite this as 3 to the power of 1 half. So now, if I substitute in 3 to the power of 1 half for square root of 3, I get 3 to the power of 1 half to the power of x is equal to 81. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 3 to the power of 1 half to the power of x, that's going to equal 3 to the power of 1 half times x, which is simply 1 half x, and this is equal to 81. Now, 81, that's the same thing as 3 to the power of 4. So now I have 3 to the power of 1 half x is equal to 3 to the power of 4, and this means 1 half x is equal to 4, and x is equal to 8.
So eight is my answer. All right, so in this problem, I have two to the power of 20 minus two to the power of 19 is equal to 16 to the power of x. So I'm gonna first start by rewriting 20 as 19 plus one. So now I have two to the power of 19 plus one minus two to the power of 19 is equal to 16 to the power of x. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So in this case, I have two to the power of 19 plus one, and this is gonna equal two to the power of 19 times two to the power of one. Now I have this minus two to the power of 19 is equal to 16 to the power of x. Now from here, if I factor out two to the power of 19 from my left-hand side, I get two to the power of 19 times two to the power of one minus one is equal to 16 to the power of x. And two to the power of one minus one, that's simply equal to one. And anything times one is itself. So I have two to the power of 19 is equal to 16 to the power of x. Now, 16, that's the same thing as two to the power of four. So now I have two to the power of 19 is equal to two to the power of four to the power of x. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So two to the power of four to the power of x, that's gonna equal two to the power of four times x, which is also two to the power of four x. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, 19 is equal to 4x. Now we have a simple equation here. All I have to do is divide both sides by 4, and I get x is equal to 19 over 4. Now, to check, my original equation was 2 to the power of 20 minus 2 to the power of 19 is equal to 16 to the power of x. Now, 2 to the power of 20 minus 2 to the power of 19, we already know that's 2 to the power of 19. So we get 2 to the power of 19 is equal to 16 to the power of 19 over 4. Now 16, that's the same thing as 2 to the power of 4. So now I have 2 to the power of 4 to the power of 19 over 4. And these two 4s cancel out, so I get 2 to the power of 19 is equal to 2 to the power of 19. All right, so in this problem, I have 3 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x is equal to 12. So obviously, I want to find the value of x here. So for my solution, I'm going to first start by rewriting my equation here. So I get 3 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x is equal to 12. And now, on my left-hand side, I'm going to go ahead and factor out 3 to the power of x. So now I get 3 to the power of x times 1 plus 1 is equal to 12. And one plus one, that's equal to two. So, I get three to the power of x times two is equal to 12. Now from here, I'm gonna divide both sides by two so when these two cancel out, and I get three to the power of x is equal to six. Now, if we plug in x equals one, we get three to the power of one, which is equal to three. And if we plug in x equals two, we get three to the power of two, which is equal to nine. So we know that the value of x 
has to be somewhere in between one and two because six is between three and nine, meaning that X is gonna be a decimal value. So to find the exact value of X, we're gonna to have to use logarithms. So if I take the log on both sides, I get log three to the power of X is equal to log six. And there are actually three important logarithmic properties that you guys should know. So the first one is that if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front. So this is going to equal b times log a. The second one that you guys should know is that if I have something in the form log of a times b, this is going to equal log a plus log b. And finally, if I have something in the form log of a over b, this is going to equal log a minus log b. So we have log 3 to the power of x equals log 6. And we can use our first property here, log a to the power of b is equal to b times log a. So I can move x to the front, and I get x times log 3 is equal to log 6. Now from here, I can we want to isolate x, so I can divide both sides by log 3. So then these two cancel out, and I get x is equal to log 6 over log 3. Now, I'm going to rewrite 6 as times 2. So I get log 3 times 2 over log 3. And remember, now we can use our second property, log a times b is equal to log a plus log b. So log 3 times 2, that's going to equal log of 3 plus log 2. And I have this over log 3. I can rewrite this as log 3 over log 3 plus log 2 over log 3. Now log 3 and log 3, these two cancel out. So I get x is equal to 1 plus log 3 or log 2 over log 3. And log 2 that's equal to 0 0.301. And now I have this over 0 0.4771. So this is going to equal 1 plus 0 0.6309. And 1 plus 0 0.6309 is 1.6309. So this is my answer. Now I actually have a second method of solving this problem. So, my equation was 3 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x is equal to 12. And I'm going to start, like I started with the first method, by factoring out 3 to the power of x for my left-hand side. So I get 3 to the power of x times 1 plus 1 is equal to 12. Now, again, I'm going to solve what's in my parentheses. 1 plus 1 is 2. So I get 3 to the power of x times 2 is equal to 12. And again, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So I get 3 to the power of x is equal to 6. Now, remember from, I got x is equal to 1.6309. Now I'm going to plug this in. To my 4x. So I get 3 to the power of 1.6309. Plus 
plus 3 to the power of 1.6309 is equal to 12. And 3 to the power of 1.6309 is 5.9998. And if I add these two together, I get approximately 12. So I get 12 equals 12. And because this is right, I know my solution is right.